the makeup of UCLA. Obviously, yes. they lean heavily on a couple very talented freshmen, but the fact they got experienced guys around them, yeah. guys like Bryce Alford, what kind of dynamic does that, that give them? Well, I think it's a, it's a testament to the older guys because I think they've obviously embraced those two freshmen uh, pretty well. And uh, they're, you know, again, I'm not around UCLA's program day to day, obviously, but uh, they seem to have great chemistry and great uh, togetherness, certainly on offense. And, uh, you know, so that's a testament, obviously, to the freshmen coming in that are talented enough to do what they do, but also to the, the veterans, like you said, that you know will understand how talented those guys are and kind of allow them to do what they do. And, and they all coexist together. And, uh, so I think Steve's done a great job. Uh, the Holiday Kid is as good a player as there is in our league, comes off the bench. I mean, again, kudos to him for embracing that role. And, uh, you know, there's a lot of, a lot of guys that are as talented as he, are, he is to, that, would, that would do that. So I think a lot of credit goes to uh, Steve Alford and certainly the older players that you mentioned that have uh, allowed them to be as good as they are. You talked just about stopping their transition game. Mm -hmm. Are they as good as anybody at finding the one defensive mistake that they as, make? As good as anybody coached against. Yeah, I mean, and, and, and we're not going to stop their transition game. We just need to try to slow it down, and we just need to guard, you know, the three-point line and take away easy baskets. They're going to make tough shots. We know that. They're talented. They're, they share the ball. They're going to get shots. They're going to make uh, some shots. We just have to make sure we're contesting those shots. Is this where one defensive breakdown shows up as much as any? Yeah, if you if you make a mistake, you pay. If you make a mistake uh, guarding a screen, you pay. They they whap a three. You make a mistake uh, showing out on a, a single screen, uh, they're gonna slip it for a dunk. I mean, you make a mistake on a ball screen, they're gonna split it for a layup. I mean, you will pay for your mistakes defensively. We're not gonna play a perfect game on Thursday. We don't have to play a perfect game. We just have to play with great toughness, great resiliency, and that's what I just talked to our team about is when they make a tough shot, a whap a three in our face and it's really good defense, we can't let that affect us, our psyche. We can't let that get us, we can't drop our heads, we sprint back to offense. We've got to get a great shot for our team and then come back on defense and dig in again. I mean, it's going to be that grind out, keep coming at you for 40 minutes mentality that's going to give us a chance to win this game. If we don't have that, it's going to be difficult. From a personnel perspective, yesterday, kind of at the end of our talk, you made a comment that I kind of wanted to get into a little more. Uh -huh. TJ Lee, if I agree with you, is very yes. underrated, not getting the credit he deserves. You offered him. Did you think that he would be as good oh, as yeah. he turned Lee out was, to be? You know, there's certain guys coming out of high school that are what I call no-brainers. TJ Lee was a no-brainer. Really skilled. He's got great size. He's very athletic. Uh, knows how to play. He's got, yeah, he's got the whole package. He's just uh, and again, a lot of Lonzo Ball gets a lot of attention, a lot of credit, which he certainly deserves. But T.J. Leaf is right there. So is Bryce Alford. You know, Isaac Hamilton. Nobody talks about him. He's a very capable player uh, in this league. I mean, Thomas Welsh. I mean, we recruited the heck out of Thomas Welsh. I mean, he's a he's turned into an unbelievable. Players. So yeah, they got guys coming off the bench that are talented. There's just there's there's no weaknesses with UCLA on the offensive side of the ball. Looking at the weaknesses they do have, I was going to ask you yeah. know defensively rebounding for them uh, seems like there might be some cracks in the armor there. You guys can exploit. Yeah, we hope so. We hope so. I mean, we're uh, again, I think they're a better defensive team this year than they were last year, but uh, uh, they they've got some areas that we want to try to uh, exploit. Uh, certainly rebounding, the rebounding battle is something every game we go into wanting to win and, and, and dominate. Uh, so it's going to be an important part of the game. There's a lot of things that are important to beat UCLA. Your margin for error, I talk about it all the time, shrinks the better teams you play. So uh, with UCLA it shrinks uh, probably more than anybody we played up to this point. How do, you think, how do you think you guys did defensively against Market and Ristich in Arizona? I mean, those were two well, they were two good players. Two. Yeah, they, I mean, they're two good players. Ristich made some good plays. Market made some good plays. I thought our defensive effort against Arizona was, was good at times, but it wasn't good enough for 40 minutes. We had too many breakdowns. And, uh, and Parker Jackie Cartwright, a guy who really hurt us late. I mean, breakdowns there. So uh, our defense is a team thing. 
and I want our players individually to take on challenges, but also as a group, we have to be consistent and good against the better teams. Because again, if you make a mistake, they make you pay. And Arizona's no different than UCLA. UCLA is more powerful and explosive offensively than Arizona is. Thank you.